Okay, really quickly before we got started, I just wanted to say that the question posted asks about these two functions when rotated about the x-axis. Um, there was another tutor that agreed and pretty much just said that the user who posted this had asked a few other similar questions. So in light of trying to help you understand the topic rather than just giving an answer, I changed the question to asking when rotated about the y-axis. The question um, regarding the x-axis is a little bit more intuitive, so hopefully these will give you the basic steps to help you understand the concept and you could apply these steps to harder questions or the other questions that were posted. Um, but these are the basics and these will help you regardless for any question regarding a solid uh, rotation area. Okay, so let's get started. This problem asks us to find the volume created between the function x equals 2y minus y squared and x equals 0 when rotated about the y-axis. Like I said, I changed it to the y-axis, not the x-axis. So step one, I always like to draw an image. This will help you visualize. This will, this will help you um, kind of set up your problem from here. So if you graph the function given x equals 2y minus y squared, you're going to get this parabola right here. You could use Desmos or a graphing calculator or anything like that. And we have to bound it by the other function given to us, x equals 0, which is just the y-axis. So once you graph both of those functions, you're going to see that you're left with this area bounded between them right here. And if you rotate that area, it's going to look like this over here, this almost kind of lemon looking shape. And you're going to see that in both of these examples, our solid does not exceed these bounds of y equals 0 and y equals 2, which is going to be important in one second. So from here, we could set up our equation. Now, it's important to understand that when you're finding the area of a rotated solid, you're essentially finding the area of all of the disks of the cross sections of this solid. So if you took this solid up and you cut it up into extremely small and infinite amount of disks, you could find the area of all of those disks. So to kind of add all of those up and find the solid area of this entire solid right here, you have to integrate. So that gives us this equation, area is equal to pi, the bounds of integration of big R of y squared minus little r of y squared dy, where this quote unquote big R of y is our function on the right, our outermost function in this solid, 2y minus y squared, and our little r of y is this innermost function to the left, x equals zero. Now you're gonna see a lot of teachers use this r of y, big R of y and little r of y, um, which is just kind of representing the big R is the outermost function and the little r is the innermost function, um, which you'll, you, could, you can get way more in detail about that with different examples, but in our case, we're just worried about the rightmost function and the leftmost function. Okay. So now that we've identified where these fall into our equation from our drawing, we could also see that the functions intersect at y equals 0 and y equals 2, like I said, these two bounds. So these are going to be our bounds of integration. So we could plug in everything we need now. We have area is equal to pi. The bounds of integration are 0 to 2 of 2y minus y squared quantity squared minus zero squared dy. Now that zero obviously is just going to cancel out, so we don't really need that, but it's important to understand how both of those functions fit into an equation. So going forward, we have everything we need and all we have to do is solve. So once you plug in all of these values, all you have to do is go forward with simplifying. So I squared this entire quantity. You're going to get this resulting uh, equation right here. And then I just kind of um, started condensing. So you're going to end up with this equation here. And from there, you can integrate all of these individual um, variables. So you end up with this equation right here, still between the bounds of zero and two. So since that zero kind of cancels out, we just have to worry about plugging this two in for y. And once you do that, you're going to get this you know, slew of numbers here. And all you have to do from there is plug it into a calculator and simplify. And once you distribute your pi to everything, you are going to end up with 3.35 as your area of the solid rotated area.
I hope this helped and I appreciate your view. Thank you. Thank you.